If at any point, or if I'm just putting you to sleep, you can just go out, all right? But I really do have something in that I believe, you know, God put this in my heart. And I knew it was going to be low today, especially with the whole fine arts thing. And then we, we usually don't meet every week. But, um, but I just wanted to finish a little bit of what I was speaking on last week. How many of you were here last week? All of us? Okay, cool. All right. So I just kind of go a little bit uh, what I shared last week so I can kind of so we can kind of take it on what I was what I'm going to talk about today. But um, just give me your feedback. We're, we're having a conversation here. We're just talking. And um, so before we get started, let's just pray. And, you know, I don't know how you came to the house of God um, tonight. Maybe you're a little tired. I know I'm a little tired. All right, I've been battling with, with migraines and things like that. But I don't know how you came tonight. But we believe in the power of prayer and we believe in the power of unity. All right. So and we believe that when, when believers come together, there there's something that happens in our lives, in the atmosphere, because we believe. Amen. We believe in a God that, that saved us. We believe in a God that died for us and rose again. And that no matter what problems we may be facing tonight, he's in control and he's on the throne. He hasn't lost power. Right. So let, let us just pray. And if anybody wanted to tell me, pray for me, I'll specifically pray for you. We'll all pray for you. Anybody need prayer? No? All right. Amen. 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 So let's pray for our sister and for our brother here. So if, you just, if you're just you just next to them, just uh, stretch your arms uh, towards them. Father, we just thank you for your love tonight. We thank you for what you're about to do tonight, Lord, in our lives, Lord. Your word declare, declares, God, when there's two or three gathered in your name, you are in the midst. We believe, God, tonight that you are in this place, for we are gathered in your name. We came here not to meet someone, but to meet you, Lord. And we just ask you, Father, that you would speak to our hearts, that we may leave this place with our faith being strengthened, Lord. That our energies may go up, that our faith may go up, that our belief in you, God, may go up. Lord, whatever may be happening in our lives, I pray that you just, Lord, bring peace upon our lives, Father. I thank you for the things that you are doing in every single young adult in this room. I pray uh, for, for our brothers and sisters, Lord, who raise their hands. I ask you that you may minister to their hearts, touch their need. Lord, supply their need according to your riches and glory. You know what they are. And I just ask you, Lord, that we may leave this place saying it was good to be in the house of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So if you're taking notes we're, um, or if you just want to follow along, uh, we're reading and we're studying this um, thing that the Lord has put in my heart to speak to you guys about called the metamorphosis. All right. So the metamorphosis. And we have been using an illustration. Remember when I started the video? Remember when I started this video? You can just play a little bit of it, Robbie. Last week, right? About the hungry caterpillar. And you remember this story? Let, let, let it just roll a little bit. Remember this story? Very hungry caterpillar. All right, you can, you can take it out now. So you, you remember that when you were in grade school, right? And the reason I brought that up, and some of you are like, what are you doing? You're crazy. So the reason I brought that up is because I knew we were going to remember it. I knew it was going to come to the forefront of our minds, and I want that picture of that caterpillar to be engraved in your mind, especially in this season. Like I said, I don't know what each and every one of you are dealing with in your own personal life, in your own personal struggles, in your journey in life, but I can tell you this, that we all are going to face what I called last week the crawling stage. And it's amazing because I was studying, you know, the story of Joseph again this week. And I said, wow. I was like, you know, what Joseph went through, it was a cycle. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. But we all will go through this crawling stage in our lives. All right? Especially if you're trying to become all who God created you to be. You will go through the crawling stage. All right? And so we ended last week. We, we spoke about Joseph. And we said how Joseph was hated on because he had a dream in his heart. And I challenge you guys to not be afraid to share your dreams or to live out your dreams because of what your brothers might say about you. And I said that sometimes 
We are afraid to live a life chasing after our dreams, the God-given dreams that He has placed on the inside of us because we're afraid what our brothers might say. We're afraid what people might think. We're afraid what, who might not support us or who might support us or who might just think that I'm weird because I'm doing this thing. But I challenge you guys to go after your dreams and go after the God-given desires that He has placed in your heart. If you know that it was Him, go after it. So then we, we ended with Joseph being thrown into a cistern. He was thrown into that dark place. And then he was pulled out and he was sold into slavery. And we ended last week in that verse. He was, be, he was sold into slavery. And what, what seemed like a tragic ending is not really an ending. There's more to that story as we continue on this week. So last week was the crawling stage, and this week, I don't know if you have a slide uh, for this, Robbie, but this week I want to call it uh, the shaping stage. The shaping stage. So if you're taking notes, you want to write down the shaping stage. After you go through the crawling stage, wherever you might be today, you will go through the shaping stage. And I'm going to get to that in a minute as we progress in the story. But if, whether you're in the shaping stage or whether you are in um, the crawling stage, I want to let you know that don't build your house on the crawling stage. Don't build your tent. Don't make your resting place in the crawling stage. Sometimes, and God began to minister to me, sometimes we begin to build our homes in the crawling stage. And you see people 30, 40, 50, 60 years old still in the crawling stage when God never meant for you to stay on the, live on the crawling stage. He meant for you to just as a season and as a stage. Can you say amen? So don't build your house. Don't, don't say this is what God has for me. This is what all life is. No, this is just a season that God has to take me through. But this season will soon be over because the more, the more I move forward, the more I press through, the more I crawl my way through, God is going to take me through the next season. And this next season might be for you the shaping stage. So um, we ended Joseph with him being sold into, uh, into slavery. Now I want you to get this picture. Joseph is sold into slavery, right? And what he saw, what he saw was the total opposite of what God showed him. So I can imagine him, they, they, you know, they, they bound him up as a, sla as a slave in, in Egypt. Now, remember, remember what I said last week? I gave you a little intro to who Joseph was. Joseph was a shepherd. He was taking care of, the, of his father's flock. So all he knew, he was a country boy. Basically, he lived somewhere here in Burlington, right, around a field. And he didn't see nothing else but a field. So that's all he saw, a field and, and a little bit of property or whatever. But I, I want you to just picture this in your mind. So now they sell him to the probably at that time the best you know, civilized uh, country in the world at that time, which was Egypt. And now Joseph enters Egypt. He, got, he gets pushed. I want you to get this. He gets pushed. What he thought was by betrayal was really a setup by God. I wonder what's happening in your life that's really a setup by God. That you're, that you're saying, man, this is something hard. And I'm not, I'm not saying that it's not hard. Trust me. I get frustrated myself. I get angry. And I sometimes I argue with God. I say, God, what's going on here? Really? You know? But... Could it be that it's really a setup that is pushing you closer to where you need to be? Because it so happened that when his brothers were going to sell him, a caravan was driving by. It so happened that when his brothers threw him in the pit, a caravan from Egypt, some traders were, was passing by. Things, things don't just happen. Amen? There's no coincidence in God. Everything that has happened in your life, in your situation, whatever is happening right now, as much as we don't like it, is not a coincidence. There's no chances, especially you who are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. Especially you who have been redeemed, who have been bought and, and, are, and, and are saved. You may not always feel saved, but you're saved by the blood of Jesus. 
I know I, right, we don't always feel safe. Sometimes we like our, the enemy kicks our butt by bringing up our past, right? Yes. He does. And we have to constantly remind ourselves who we are in Christ. That I have been redeemed. I have been seated in heavenly places with Christ. He has set my foot on a solid rock. And my house is built on, on, on Jesus Christ alone. Amen. So we got to constantly remember this. And so now Joseph, so there's no coincidence. They took him to Egypt. Now he is, he's encountering all these things. And when I was just, the Lord was just pouring this in my heart last night. You know, he, and I can imagine him walking into Egypt. And he was in a bad place. But you can see beautiful things in a bad place. If we begin to change our perspective, okay, he begins to walk into Egypt and he started seeing all these big pyramids. i never seen this before. He started seeing new languages. Man, I thought people just talk ghetto. But look, these people have new language. You know, all of a sudden he's seeing new things. He didn't see that when he was taking care of the sheep. But all of a sudden, he's being exposed. Somebody said exposed. He's being exposed to a new place. And so I said, the Lord began to deal it with my heart. And he said, could it be that I'm exposing you to where I'm going to take you to? Could it be that God is exposing you to the things that he has for you? Right now in your season and in your life. Could it be that the, the things that look so negative is what God is using to show you, and get, you may feel like a prisoner going through, man, all these weird things, but God is saying, yeah, look, take a look real good because that is what you're gonna have. You know, I remember when I was driving the bus, I was a, a bus driver for a little bit. I did a little bit of everything. I was hustling at one point. Not in a good way, you know, I was trying to do what I have to do to survive. So, it was a stage. It was a stage, right? And so, I was driving school buses and I had the best route ever. I had the route to Princeton, right? And I was like driving through these fancy uh, woods and, and, that, and all of a sudden I see all these beautiful homes. And driving, I was like, man, God, could it be that you have this? And, I, and all of a sudden, I felt like God was exposing me. Could it be that you have all these big things for me? Could it be that you're showing me what could be? Could it be that you're showing me what I could have? Some of you guys don't believe it. Can you believe that and say amen? amen? You see, some of you know what I'm talking about because you know that you have gone through so many things even at an early age that, that you've been exposed to, things that, that you have gone through and maybe God is trying to leave you clues on where he wants to take you. Tell the person next to you, God might be leaving you clues. God might be leaving you clues. He might be leaving you clues. And so Joseph... Um, he, he began to go into the city, right, to Egypt, and he was seeing the opposite, or he was being treated the opposite of what he saw or what God showed him. And isn't that how life is sometimes? Sometimes you have this big dream, but the opposite is what's happening. You feel like, you know, I'm, I'm going to be so rich, and then you're going through something of financial hardship, Right? You're like, man, I'm going to be in a good relationship. And all of a sudden, things don't go as well as you hope to be. Right? Isn't that the part of life? So, but don't be discouraged because things don't look like you want them to look. Because God has a bigger plan. And God has a better strategy for your life. And we can see that in the shaping stage. So I want you to turn your Bibles to numbers if you have your Bibles or your app. But if not, you can just look up here. Numbers chapter 23, I want to read this because it is a promise that, that stuck with me in my heart when I first read it, and it's found in the Word of God, and I want you to really take this to heart. And it says in Numbers 23, 19, God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? So, what has God showed you in your life? What dream has God given you? What promise has God given you? How do you see yourself? I want you to picture this. Because if, if you begin to take God's word to heart, it will literally begin to shift your life around little by little. And you begin to go through this metamorphosis. 
And people will begin to look at you and say, wait a minute. And you can tell, wait, don't, don't judge me yet because I'm still going through this metamorphosis. I'm still going through this change. I'm still going through this process. So I want you to begin to ask yourself, what has God promised me? What is the thing that God has put in my heart? I was talking to a coworker today. I said, what is, what is it that you want to do? What is it that you want to dream? What is it that you dream about when, you, when, when there is no customers? What is it that you dream doing when you are frustrated at the place you are in? And what you see yourself doing, could it be that that's what God wants you to do? If it's going to glorify His name. If it's going to bring people to, to a better relationship with Christ. I'm not talking about you have to be a preacher or an evangelist or you can be a doctor, you can be a nurse, you can be a dentist, you can be whatever, a, a businessman. But what, whatever you do, you exalt God in whatever it is that God is calling you to do. What is it? And then remind yourself of this promise that God is not a man that he will lie. That he will fulfill his promise in your life. If you believe that, say amen and give God some praise tonight. You give God, we were a few, but you know what? This is how the early believers met. They met just like this, and Peter will get up and, and he'll start preaching the gospel. And people will get filled with the Spirit of God. I wish that would happen here tonight. Amen? People who will go out of this place and will start following what God has placed on the inside of you. And so, so then, uh, you know, God will show you clues. And then now, let's get into the shaping stage. Joseph goes into this shaping stage, and the shaping stage is that he ends up in prison. There's a cycle going on here. The first dark place that he goes through to, to elevate him from one level to the next level was the sister. Do you guys get it? And now he goes to another dimension. You may, it may not feel like another dimension, but it's really a whole nother dimension that God took him through. He passed the one test and then God said, all right, you're ready for the next test. So could it be what you're going through tonight? Could it be that that is just a test to promote you to the next dimension? We said last week that promotion, that we all want to be promoted. Raise your hand, wave at me. Say, I want to be promoted. We said last week, man, we get excited, we shout, we say hallelujah. People will never praise, open up their mouth to praise when we want to get promoted, right? But I said this, I said promotion, if you have that, promotion does not come into your life, into my life. Promotion does not come without persecution. Promotion does not come without persecution. A lady just finished telling me right before we came in here. She said, man, I heard your word on Sunday. And it was for me, it was powerful. But then I got attacked, I, was, I felt like they were throwing bowling balls at me on Monday. In other words, God gave her her promotion in the spiritual realm. But promotion does not come without persecution. Just because you're getting attacked by the enemy mentally, physically, financially, whatever it may be, doesn't mean that you're not in the will of God. It does not mean that you're not in the will of God. It could mean that you're not in the will of God, but it does not mean that you're not in the will of God. You could be in the will of God and still go through persecution. Joseph was in the will of God, and he was persecuted by his brothers for his dream. Jesus was in the will of God, and he still went to the cross, right? So now, promotion doesn't come without persecution. And persecution, we don't like it because it hurts. It is painful. So persecution doesn't take place without pain. Yet even through the pain, God will show himself and God will show us that he has a plan. Can you say God has a plan with me? Plan. Say it like you believe it. God has, a plan. God has a plan for me. Amen. God has a plan for you. I really do believe that. So Joseph goes through this, uh, this place and, and he goes through a cycle kind of and he goes through this next season. And now in this next season, again, we start seeing it from the beginning. He starts getting favor from God. He starts getting favor with the with, with, with the with Potiphar, with the per, his, his master, and he starts getting favor with them again, just like in the beginning. He got favor with, with his father. So then here comes here comes the persecution, and the persecution was now that he was in Potiphar's house. Here comes this woman to try to seduce him. Here comes this temptation to try to seduce him, to try to take him down. What is it that is trying to take you down? It may not be a woman, it may not be a dude. What is it for you that is trying to steal your destiny from in front of you? Think about it. 
Oh, I can't answer that question for you because I don't live with you. And even if I did, I don't walk with you. I'm not in your thoughts. What is it that is constantly fighting with you to bring you down from your place of destiny? And then when you begin to be honest with yourself and say, all right, God, this is it. The Bible says if we confess our sins, if we confess what we're going through to God, he is faithful enough to forgive us. He is faithful enough to help us. He is faithful enough to bring us through, right? So now, he goes through this stage. Where was I? See, you got to pay attention. Where was I? He was going to Egypt. Potiphar's wife. Potiphar's wife. Boom. Hashtag. <laughs> So he goes to Potiphar's and he gets, to take, he gets the temptation. In other words, he went through the persecution again in this other season. And in this other season, he resisted the temptation because he wanted to honor God. And, and I'm skimming through the story because I'm, I'm guessing we all know the story, right? Yeah? yeah? Okay, so, so Joseph, he goes through this temptation and he flees. And as he flees, she stays on with his robe. Isn't that, see, I get excited about the word. Isn't that what happened in the beginning? Man, in the beginning, his brothers took his robe that his father gave him. And in this other cycle of his life, his other cycle, he got favor again. Then he gets persecuted again. And then he gets the robe taken from him again. I mean, this might just be me. I, I mean, I just get excited about the word. Because God is up to something in every single detail of our lives. Whatever is happening to you, is happening for you. It's really happening for you. I don't like when things happen to me. I really don't. But when, when, I, when I get down and pray, I realize, God, you're doing this for me. I don't like it, man, and, it, and it's frustrating, but you're doing this for me. To take me to the next dimension. So she takes his robe. He runs butt naked. Right? Out of there. Can I say that? Right? Like, we watch words. Huh? <laughs> Amen. So he, he, he ran away, right, from temptation. Because he said to her, I cannot displease God. I have to honor God. I got to honor God. Will we be the young adults? Will we be the people, the people of God, who God, who Jesus paid a price for? That will say, when, you're trying to, when they're trying to compromise you at work, when, they're, when you're, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or whoever, I, I want to honor God. Whatever it may be for you, I want to honor God. When you feel like lying or cheating or whatever, I want to honor God. Will we honor God when it gets tough? Because if we do, promotion is coming. If we honor God, promotion is coming. I told you guys last week that promotion comes for people who are responsible with what God has placed in your hands. And if God has placed your life in your hands, because he made you, if you are responsible with the life you have, he will give you promotion. And I began to say last week, and you remember, why should God give you more when you haven't been faithful with what you have now? Why should God give you more when you haven't been faithful with what you have now? Joseph was faithful and that's why he was promoted. So now he gets promoted in the second stage of his life. He, I believe he was in the shaping stage. God said, all right, he's, he's working. And now he goes through, he runs, and now this woman accuses him. And now he gets thrown into prison for something that he didn't do. Being persecuted. Again, we see it, a cycle. The first stage, he got thrown into a dark place. That was the sister. This part, he got thrown into a dark place. It was the prison. But tell the person next to you, say, promotion is coming. You see, and I want to focus tonight on this shaping stage. Because we all want to be shaped. How many of you want to be shaped into who God created you to be? We all want to be shaped. But none of us want to go through the dark place. But it is in the dark place that the shaping takes place. You want to write that down. It is dark places. The dark places are the preparing places. The dark places are the preparing places. And so he was thrown into a dark place 
but yet he was closer to his destiny. I wonder what is it that you, what is your dark place tonight? It might be financially. It might be a dream that hasn't come to pass. It might be something with your family. It might be something personal that you haven't shared with nobody. What is your dark place? What is it that God is trying to deal with you about? Because at the end of the day, this is between you and God. At the end of the day, this is him and you trying to work in you, trying to perfect his work in you, trying to make you better. God is not after you to try to, you know, uh, make you look bad. God is not trying to make you. He's just after you because he loves you. He loves me. He wants to perfect his good work that he began in you in your life. And Joseph went to a dark place. He went through a preparing place. And God was trusting, was trusting him. So now, I want you to get this. He goes into this prison, right? He goes into this dark, preparing place. And inside this prison, again, we see the cycle start. Man, th this stuff's good. Can you say amen? amen? He begins to get favor again. The warden in the prison begins to like him. Because whenever you're obedient to God, God's hand is on you even in trouble. When you begin to obey God, even in the small things, he's with you. And he's backing you up and he's covering you. And people don't get, man, why, why are they always progressing? Why, why are they always this and always that? And they start hating, but they don't realize that God's hand is upon your life. They don't realize what you had to go through to get to where you are. Some of you had to go through a lot of things to get tonight, to get through here tonight. In your life, in your family, in your situation, nobody knows your tears like you know your tears. Nobody knows, there was a Spanish song that this Christian singer sang, and it's called, If My Pillow Will Talk. If my pillow will talk, it will discover all the sleepless nights that I was having. If my pillow will talk, it would, it would hear me saying about my problems and my issues if my pillow could talk. And some of you know what I'm talking about. Joseph went through this place, the shaping stage. And in this shaping stage, God begins to mold Joseph. And God begins to give him favor. You're wondering why you're still here is because God has given you favor. You're wondering why some of your friends died or some of your friends are in prison or some of your friends are doing so bad and you are not. You think you're doing bad, but when you look back and you say, man, I'm not doing so bad, right? It's because God is with you. It's because God's hand is upon your life. If you believe it, say, God is really with me. Man, I may not have everything that I want, but God is really with me. I may not have everything that I, that I so, you know, stress about, but God is really with me. Man, I should have died in that accident. I should have died when they pulled that gun out. I should have died in this moment, but God is really with me. How many can praise God for that? Because God is with us, guys. He is with us. Even in the prison, even in the dark place, God is with us. And Joseph was in that place. And God was giving him favor. And he was being promoted again. But what comes after promotion? Persecution, right? But this was a different kind. See, now God can trust him. And now since God can trust him, God begins to allow him to use his gifts. I want you to get this because God dropped this in my heart and I almost like started running with Pastor Billy. We were just talking. And God began to tell Joseph, or not tell him, but God begins to do something behind the scenes and God was orchestrating everything. And it so happened that two people who used to work with the king were also in jail. How many remember that? The chief cupbearer and the chief baker, right? The cupbearer and the, and the chief baker. They were in there, they got in trouble, they were thrown into prison, they were thrown in there again. And so, as they were thrown in there, Joseph got favor from God. And then they started having this dream they didn't know the dream. They were worried about the dream. And then they told Joseph this dream. I want you to get this. Especially in your season right now. If you begin. I don't know, Robbie. I don't know how I put it in the quote. But, but I want to say it like I feel it right now. If you will begin to operate in your gift. Doors will begin to open for you. 
Listen. Robbie, how I put it up there? I said, use your gift even in hostile places. Use your gift even in tough places. Okay. You can write that down. Joseph could have said, you know what? I'm in this prison. I'm so mad. I didn't even do this. I, I, I'm here unfairly. And he could have said, I'm not using my gift. You know people like that? I know people like that. Even in church. We can say that. Even people in ministry. Even leadership. Even pe and not just here, everywhere that I've, that I've gone. I, I meet people like this. Don't want to help somebody. Don't want to give you a hand. Why? I don't know. But don't they know that if they release their gift, they will be freed as well? Don't you know if you help somebody reach their dream, you might be released as well? Man, if you get this, you will stop being selfish. If you get this, you will stop just thinking about yourself. And right now, I'm being delivered in, in many ways as I'm sharing my gift with you. Because I decided to share my gift, God is doing a new thing in me. I wonder what God wants to do in you if you begin to operate in your gift. And if you don't know what your gift is, you better start asking God because you don't have time to waste in life. You can use your gift even in this making stage. Joseph, if he would have said, I'm not using my gift, I'm not translating his dream, he would have died in prison, I think. Do you want to die in your prison? Do you want to die in your dark place? Begin to be giver freely. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. Begin to give freely what he has given you. This is not just talking about money. This is talking about what he has entrusted to you. What is he teaching you? What is he showing you? What is he revealing to you? What relationships? What connections? What things you know that you can, you can be a blessing to? If you begin to sow a seed in that, man, you will reap a harvest. Your door might open. Are you getting this? So now Joseph, he begins to operate in his gift. And he begins to translate, man, this dream means this. This dream means that in three days, you're going to be set free and you're going to be restored to your position. God gets excited. Amen. Your dream, unfortunately, means that in three days, you're going to, the king is going to kill you. And he's going to hang your body on the pole and you're going to be eaten by the birds. Man. Man. I can imagine, he didn't like that. But not everybody's going to like when you operate in your, in, your, in your gift. You got to operate in your gift anyways. You got to operate in the things that God has placed in your hand because at the end of the day, Kevin, at the end of the day, Lori, guys, God is going to say, what did you do with what I have given you? Oh, but God didn't support me, but Lord, I really know to. What did you do with the staff that I have put in your hand, Moses? What did you do with what I have given you? Oh, God, but you know, I wasn't served. For whatever. What did you do with what I have given you? And what are you going to say before God? You can say, God, I want, I want you to be able to say, God, I just did a little bit. I just did a little bit. And he can say, you know what? In the little bit that you have done, come and enjoy in your, in your, in your master's glory. Amen. You did a little bit, but I'm going to reward you with a lot. So Joseph begins to operate in his dream. And if you have that verse up, and it's found in, in uh, Proverbs 18, 16. Proverbs 18, 16. And it says this. It says, a gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. Another translation says, your gift will make room for you, and it will bring you before great men. Because you operate in your gift, God will bring you before great people to operate in your purpose, in your divine purpose. I don't know how many of you are ready, but I'm ready to go into my divine assignment. How many of you are ready? Say amen. amen. Joseph operated in his gift, and he was brought out of the prison. It took two years. Two years. 
He was forgotten. That was a different kind of persecution. He was forgotten. Man, I feel like I'm at the crawling stage again. Running the risk of being stepped on. Running the risk of being forgotten. Running the risk of being overlooked. Now this guy, I helped him, he's released, and he forgets me. And he's at the shaping stage. But some beautiful things take place in the shaping stage. And I want to talk to you a little bit. You guys are probably old enough to remember these. Do you remember these? If I showed this to the source, they'd be like, what? <laughs> right? And these are like some wrestling events that I went to when I was younger. <laughs> I was a wrestling fan. But that, you remember, Karen's like, I don't know. <laughs> Do you remember these? I can't see the last one. Yeah. So, we remember how, how this was processed, right? Yeah. How many of you ever took a class in high school with this? No? Right? Yeah. And they called it the dark room. And it was in the dark room. They would take these. And they will put, they will go into this dark place. And in this dark place was the making place. Before they had digital and all these things. Now we don't even print our pictures, I don't think, right? We just have them on our phones yeah. or tablets. But before, as soon as you took it, yeah, I'm going to go see my picture. Go to CVS, right? Now we're <laughs> and they will put it through this machine. But before CVS, they, they had to go through this dark room. And it was in the dark place that somebody, the guy will put on this white robe and he'll begin to work so carefully on these pictures. And he'll put them on this liquid and he'll begin to do all these things to it. I don't know what it's called, but he'll begin to all, do all these things to it. And then he'll get these things after they get a little bigger and he'll begin to hang them so that they can dry. And once they were dry, he would give them to the person and that was a picture. It was done in the dark place. And then we moved from doing it in the lab, from the, the one, the big cameras that you took the picture and they came out right away. And you made like all this noise. Like you had to put some earplugs on. But inside that thing, it had a, 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 whatever it had, but it had a dark place. A processing. Right? So it is in these dark places that things are made. What is God making in your life in this dark place that you might be in, in one area or another? For those of you who, how many of you have children? Nobody? She knows, I don't have no experience, <laughs> but she knows that to have, and we all know, we all, we, we all took a class, that a baby develops where? In a womb. And the womb is a dark place. But the dark place is the making place. So, we go back to what I showed you at the beginning. And what I've been talking about last week. The caterpillar, after he begins crawling, and I'm, and I'm almost done. But I want you to get this. As the caterpillar begins to crawl, and we ended that last week. He begins to crawl up a high place. Whether that's a, 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 a tree, a leaf. And if you watch the video of him, he begins to hang there upside down, like in a little curl. And then he begins to swarm a little bit and shake a little bit. And his coating begins to come off little by little. That coat of many colors begins to fall off little by little. And I just started thinking about, well, isn't that what happened to Joseph? And he begins to remove that little coating little by little. And on top of that coating are all his little legs. I call them legs. What do you call them? Legs. So all those little legs begin to fall off along with the coating. And I said, man, he's losing all his little legs. And then I said, could it be that he's losing all his legs because he was destined to have some wings? Mm -hmm. You can get excited about that. Mm -hmm. Joseph lost his legs. He, he didn't have no movement, no saying where he was going. 
They just dragged them into slavery. They just dragged them into Potiphar's house. They just dragged them into prison. But when he thought he lost his leg, God was saying, you know what? I destined you to have some wings. Amen. You think you are not able to walk. But man, you better get ready because you're about to fly. Amen. You may be in the shaping stage, but the losing of your legs is preparation for your wings. The losing of your legs is preparation for your wings. Whatever you're losing in your life right now, God is preparing something better for you. Whatever might not be working out right now in your life, God is preparing something better for you. And then that, that caterpillar begins to take off that old self. I want you to go with me into this uh, powerful scripture in Hebrew, chapter 12, verse 1. If you want to write it down. It reminded me when I started thinking about the caterpillar losing his skin. He went to another level. That we, if we want to go to another level, we must lose our old selves. Tell the person next to you, get rid of your old self. No, no, tell them what an attitude. You better get rid of your old self. We family, so we know we nobody got attitudes here. <laughs> you better get rid of your old self. Get rid of your old habits, your old bad attitudes. Some of them try to creep back up sometimes, right? Yeah. I know sometimes I can get a little attitude-ish. Yeah. Right? That's, I made that up. Right. She's trying to look it up in the dictionary. <laughs> I wouldn't even try. <laughs> <laughs> so, but look at this. Hebrew chapter, this is powerful. This is powerful. It says, therefore, since we, we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us, who's on, say, say that's me. That's me. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. Let us throw off everything. Just like Joseph was stripped off the coating, just like the caterpillar begins to strip off of that coating, let us also hinder, and let us also throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. In other, in other words, what I believe is saying, look, let, get rid of everything that so entangles you from becoming all who God created you to be. God created you to be more than what you are today. What I mean by that is this, you are not supposed to be overcome by your circumstance. You're supposed to overcome your circumstance by the Christ that's living inside of you. Did that make sense? Yeah. You are supposed to be a victorious person, not a victim in your walk with Christ. I know sometimes we go through pity parties, but look, when we get done pity partying and crying, let's remind ourselves who we are in Christ. Let us throw off everything that hinders us, the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the race that is before us. God has something before you. God has a great call over your life. Whether that's in the business field, whether that's in ministry, whether that's in your family, in your neighborhood, whatever it might be, you know what it is. You know the dream that God placed on the inside of you. But you got to understand, what is it, Lord? Help me get rid of everything. And you know what else God wanted me to tell you as I was studying this? As the, the, as the caterpillar begins to remove his flesh, some time goes by and he begins to grow a cocoon, right? Another level. And inside that cocoon, you see it moving. You see it, it, it seems like he's struggling in there. It was a dark place. For the for the, for, the, for the caterpillar, that was the making stage. That was the film in the dark room. That was the baby in the womb. That was Joseph inside the prison. And inside that cocoon, the caterpillar begins to develop. Tell the person next to you, don't let nobody break your development. Don't let nobody, break your development. Don't let nobody interrupt what God is doing in your life. Tell them. Listen, because if we don't take this time, I was talking to somebody the other day, and, and they were frustrated because, man, they were like, man, I'm tired of being single, I can't find the right one, blah, blah, blah. 
And I said, I understand, you know, but I want to give you an advice. I said, look, instead of you trying and trying and trying over and over again, how about you take this stage, it's just a stage, how about you take the stage to really develop yourself? How about you take the stage to really grow so that way the person that you want will be attracted to you when she finds you? Right? Because if that's, if that's the woman of your dream, well then she's going to only be attracted by someone at her level too. Right. So take the time that you're in that dark place. Man, I'm in that dark place. Take that dark place and grow and eat and feed yourself and nourish your mind and nourish your body and nourish your spirit. What is it that I need to, what is God trying to show you in your molding stage? What is God trying to develop in you, in your character, in the way you treat people, in the way you talk? What is God trying to show you and molding you so that you can be so that you don't have to keep crawling your whole life. I know people who are 40 and 50 still crawling, still talking like they're 17. Still acting, wearing their pants down here like if they're 15. Come on, really? Grow up now. I'm not saying that to be critical, but I'm saying is you're not called to crawl. You have to crawl, and you might be crawling in this stage of your life. We all will crawl, but you're not called to live in the crawling stage. You're not called to live in this dark place either. But while you're in the dark place, take advantage of it. While you're in the dark place, grow and read and learn and say, man, what, 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 what can I learn about this? And what can I, I, I Read. Some of you guys don't even read. <laughs> Open up your mind. Amen. Read. Invest in your mind. If you can't buy a book and invest 10 bucks, 20 bucks in a book or a class or a seminar for your own growth, for some, some people spend more money on the outside of their bodies than what they do in their minds. What are you investing for you, for your future? Get in the Word of God and say, God, I don't want to just read about you or what the preachers are telling me about you. I want to know you. In this making stage, in this dark place that I'm in, whatever area of life you might be in, God, I want to know you. What is it that you want to develop in me to make me all who you created me to be? Because I'm, not, I'm only going to be in this cocoon for a little bit. See, the caterpillar doesn't stay there forever, but don't skip the process. And don't let nobody else bring you out of the process either. There's a story about this man who saw, you probably heard the story, you probably read it, but I wanna share it with you for those of you who have not. There's a story about a man who was walking and he saw, he saw a cocoon and he saw a little slit on it and he saw the, the butterfly try to come out. He, he saw the little, little legs, the longer legs than what he had. It started like trying to come out and he saw it and he kept looking at it. He said, man, this thing's really struggling. And, and he saw it struggling, and he thought he was doing it a favor. And he said, man, you know what, let, let me help him out. He took a pair of scissors, and he opened it very, very gently. He opened it, the, he slid the cocoon. Butterfly kept coming out, kept coming out, landed on the floor. He just stood back and watched the caterpillar, and, and his body was a little abnormal. He was swollen in the body and had tiny wings. And never again will that caterpillar will be able to fly because it was not fully developed. For the rest of his life, it will crawl with an abnormal body because someone cut him out. Don't cut yourself out of God's process because you will come out undeveloped. If you want to be all who God created you to be, let him mold you in the dark place. So that when you come out, man, you'll have a nice picture. When you come out, you'll be well equipped for the task that's in front of you. So I want to leave you with one final thing. Every masterpiece has to go through the shaping stage or to the making place. This stage 
is where you will come out flourishing. Now, this stage, trust that God loves you and that he will and is making you into his wonderful masterpiece. Proverbs 3, if you have it, Robbie. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. And if you could put some worship music in the background, I want to pray. But I want you to hear this. I don't know where you are today. I don't know if you are in the crawling stage or in the making or in, or in the shaping stage. If you are in your dark moment. But I want to tell you something. Joseph, Joseph didn't stay in the prison forever. We're going to talk about that next week if you come. But listen. Joseph didn't stay at that stage forever. I want you to remember this in your stage. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways, submit to him. And he will make your path straight. In all your ways, submit to him. And he will make your path straight. In the Hebrew, this is what it means. In all your ways, know him. In all your ways, know him. That's what it literally means in the Hebrew. In all your ways, know him. And he will make your path straight. In other words, while you are in this dark place, while you are in this shaping place, while you are in this making place, don't just sit there and be bitter and be resentful and sit around hoping for something to happen. Sit there. But say, God, I want to know you in this season of my life. I want to know the plans that you have for me. I want to know the reason that you created me. I want to know the reason that you have me in this season where I'm at. If, if you're laid off, I want to know why am I, why am I laid off? Why am I going through this problem? Why am I going through this situation? Whatever it might be for you. God, why am I in this shaping stage? I want to know you. Jose preached about you, God, but I want to know you for who you are. And if that's your prayer, I want you to stand to your feet. I want you to stand to your feet. I want to pray with you. I want to pray. I believe God is speaking to us. And, and I believe God is speaking to us, guys, because he's getting ready to do something awesome. See, when you, when you just hold this up, you don't know what picture this is. And it looks, it looks like it's nothing, right? It looks like, man, this is just a piece of brown thing, right? What is this? This is... But when you take it into the dark place, the person who's working on it knows what beautiful picture it will be. The God who created you and me knows your dark place. He knows your molded place. And he's creating a beautiful picture in your life. If you believe that, I want you to lift up your hands, guys. And I want you to say, God, you're making a beautiful picture in my life. Yes, come on, say it loud. Say, God, you are molding my life. You are creating a brand new heart within me. You are molding my heart. You are shaping it. And you are making me who you created me to be. And I know that in this dark place, you will show me who you are. I will know you. I thank you for what you are doing in my life. I thank you because I shouldn't even be here tonight. But yet you pleased to bring me to your house tonight. You kept me. You protected me even through everything that I have been through. And you have spoken to my heart tonight. And you have me in this place because you love me. God, will you help me love you back with my life? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you guys. God bless you. Amen. I want you to just greet uh, two or three people who you never saw before. Just greet them and just... Uh,